Long Distance Act One is a play in prose poetry, I hope. Carrick is our son, is all the egos, Albert Schweitzer and Attila the Hun, mother and father, telephone fairy, sister, ex-wife, and therapist. <laughs> wake up, wake up. Who the hell are you? I'm the telephone fairy. I have your mother on the line. Would you like to speak to her? Yes and no. Oh, by the way, it's a collect call. How much will it cost? Time will tell in more ways than one. Okay, put her on. Hi, Mom, how are you doing? Enjoying the peace and quiet? Yes, son, it's so peaceful here, except for your father's wheezing. I warned him, smoking those coffin nails will put you in your early grave. Mom, I remember when you wandered around mumbling over the peace of the grave. Reason? Children's fingerprints on closet doors and walls. It's a trifle late, but I solved your problem. Mittens, except when we were eating and sucking our thumbs. Son, you and your sister had the warmest mittens money could buy. Mom, let's move on. Tell me, why did you have kids? I loved having babies, bathing and nursing. I had the finest milk. You think your babies will always be babies. Mom, you always thought you knew a hell of a lot. How the hell didn't you know babies couldn't be babies forever? Not even your babies. So, son, what's new? I have a new therapist. Is he Jewish? What the hell difference does that make? He's trying to demotherize me. Get you out of my fucked up head. He keeps reminding me you're dead. So, son, how's your health? When you left my home, you were a perfect physical specimen. Both my children were perfect physical specimens. No, no, no more, Mom. I had a touch of stomach cancer, and my left eye is bye-bye. What happened to your eye? Did they remove it? No, but when I close my right eye, I can barely see. Cancer? That's from your father's side. I come from the best stock. Mom, I'm thinking maybe all of those enemies didn't work. <laughs> you sure love giving enemies. I spent half my boyhood on a cold, tiled bathroom floor. When you ran a fever, the enemies always brought your temperature down. I was a fine nurse with my children. Does your sister still play the piano? Is she watching her weight? I was proud of the way she played. You too. Mother, you were proud of you. I remember the piano bench. Who plays the piano bench? Please shut up. For once in your death, just listen. Remember, son, practice makes perfect. That's what you said. And then you were gone. Hat, in, hat on head, purse in hand, shopping for food and your goddamn cleaning supplies. I practice, I practice being lonely. Son, I know, don't say a word. Just listen to the poem I wrote so long ago. I thought if I wrote it down, maybe I could erase the loneliness from my head. Atonal, who heard the notes I played? Chords in the key of see, hear me, I practice being lonely. A piano bench bear, but for me, I practice being lonely. I thought you played well, considering you didn't have this, your sister's talent. That's it, Mom, no more. It's time to say goodbye. You can say goodbye to her, but not to me. I'm Attila the Hun, your brother. We're forever a part of each other. Why do you tiptoe about when stomping is in order? Ask her why she sashayed around in corset and bra. Was it for we to see, or might it be a castrated dad? Fated never to be a bass, but maybe a baritone with a loving life coach at his side. 
Do you know why he gobbled down his dinner on Friday nights? Because freedom, though fleeting, awaited across the hall in apartment 3C, where Mr. Steinberg sat, a pinochle or Jimmy, Jim, gin rummy deck in his hand. No matter to dad, he was playing escape. Attila, please stop. The memory tape in our head is wearing me out. No, she wore us out with her ravenous appetite to rule a roost. The chicks be damned. When sister didn't eat enough in her chubby is better crazy head, she forced fed her. So sister ate crow. When that didn't work, she pulled sister's hair in harmony with the tortured child's screams. In 40 taste but dead years, sister hasn't said, mm hmm, that's delicious. Attila, she's dead. Why are we keeping her alive? No, bro, in time she may be dead, even forever. Then it will be too late to hurt her back. Our words mustn't fall on dead ears. Ask her why. No, how was school today? Do you have much homework? Sorry. Once more, I'll tell you why between pompous proclamations and being a frenzied cleaning machine. We lived in fear of being mocked and vacuumed up, in a sense we were. But Tilla, what about Dad? He didn't much talk to us. He never, or hardly ever, came between her angry words, her threatening hand to protect his kids. Why stain her with every inch and whitewash him? Brother, he was one of us, except he shaved. He was her firstborn. He thought his life began when he met a good-looking gal who spoke a good English and had brothers and sisters who went to college. I'll be somebody. She'll raise me up. So began his life of being put down. Hi, brother. It's me, Albert Schweitzer, your best third. Remember me? Albert, sometimes you get pounded out of our head by Attila with his heavy club. Send Attila away. Listen to me. Let's relive the moment-to-moment -moment magic of mother bathing us with sister in lathers of song and gentle strokes in a tub full of laughter. And our sitting around the kitchen table as she regaled us with sis stories of her long-gone relatives the ones we were like, she said. Son, you remind me of my unk grandfather Abe. Every time you looked at him, he was eating a hunk of Jewish rye bread. How we howled. Remember the taste of the chocolate pudding pot leftovers? What a delicious time it was. And when we were sick, she was just like Florence Nightingale, except for being Jewish. And our home news round, Thursday was collection day. Mom sure decked us out. Pressed white pants, polished shoes, and a starched white shirt. We look pretty spiffy. Hey, this is the hunt. I'm back to tell you Albert's out of this part of our mind. He's giving her the Nobel Prize for doing our laundry. How about sainthood for starching and ironing a shirt? Son, son, pick up the phone. I hear talking. What's going on? Mom, you don't want to know. Let's let the past rest. Try to forget the noisy kids, the fin fingerprinted doors. Wipe them out of your mind. Hi, guy. This is the telephone fairy. I have another call for you. It's your ex-wife. Hello. This is a surprise. Hello back. Please put your mother on. We can talk later. Hi, old gal. How's dad? Who is this? It's your former, former daughter-in-law. Do you remember me? Of course I remember you. The one with the gorgeous sister. How come you never called me mother? Oh, indeed I did. I called you mother many times. Just ask your son. 
I guess you're still in the theater. It's the hardest way to make a living, unless you're a star. Are your folks still alive? I really liked your dad. We got along like two peas in a pod. <clears throat> no, dearie, more like two nuts living on a funny farm wearing color-coordinated straight jackets. I gotta go now. Give my love to your hubby. Tell him nothing lasts forever. Mom, I'm signing you off too. I'm very tired. Give my love to Dad. Be kind to him. Son, you sound down. Are you all right? I wish you sounded more cheerful. <clears throat> okay, Mom, how's Cheerio? That's a breakfast cereal. I never served my children cold cereal, nor any instant foods. You and sister had the strongest bones. I, I served you oatmeal and farina and wheatina. Why hot cereal? It felt, I'm sorry. You and your sister had the strongest bones. Why hot cereal in August? It felt like a, our stomach was on fire. Matilda, you're burning us up with your anger. It's too late to scar her. Telephone fairy, I'm, I'm out, I'm out of here. Telephone fairy, I'm out of here. Take your wand and and find another victim to play telephone torture with. No, no, before you go, I have your sister on the line. Yes and no. Okay. Hi, sis. How are you? Some days are better than others. I'd like to speak to mom. Are you sure? Yes. I double down on my dose of anxiety pills. Hi, mom. It's your daughter. It's been a long time. Hello, dear. Are you watching your weight? Is your hair still naturally blonde? Do you remember the perfect curls I made? Mom, mostly I remember the intense look on your face, this curling iron in your hand. I didn't dare move my head. I barely breathed. I was a frightened child. You were an obedient and beautiful child. Mom, I was scared. From moment to moment, I didn't know who you were. I was your mother. I washed you, I fed you, I dressed you, I kissed you goodnight. I'll always be your mother. Yeah, she's like a niche that won't go away. But till you go away, you're beating a dead mother. Hello again, it's me, Albert. Remind sister of the good times, especially when mom sang to us. Ask her if she remembers the poem she wrote to mom. She was about six or seven. Sis, do you recall the poem you wrote to mom? If you do, recite it for her, for me. Let's all love each other, at least for the length of the poem. I remember the poem and how much I loved her, but really not why. Mom, it's sister again. Remember the poem I wrote to you? I was about six or seven. Yes, but I don't recall the words. Do you? Yes, every word. I love my little mommy. She's very, very sweet. I love my little mommy. She's very, very neat. No, not neat. Crazy clean. But Tilla, shut up. She liked her children to be clean and bathe them every day. And I get very lonely when my mommy goes away. Oh, mom, I do remember how much I loved you and the other you, the ones whose words made me freeze. No, dear, I wasn't cold. That's from your father's side, all cold fish. Your poem is lovely, just needs a little work. Brother, here's the phone. She is a piece of work. Sis, wait, don't go. I'm going to ask her to sing for the two little boys, for you and me and Albert. Who's Albert? Save your question for a rainy day. Okay, bro, for you I'll stay. Hey, Mom. I'm sorry. Hey, Mom, would you sing two little boys for Sis and me? 
I'm not sure I remember all the words, but I'll try. Two little boys and two little toys, each was a wooden horse. Daily they play, each summer day, warriors each, of course. One little chap had a mishap, broke off his horse's head, wept for his toy, then cried with joy, as his young playmate said, Do you think I would leave you crying? And this one on my horse for two, climb aboard here, Joe, we'll be flying. I go just as fast with two. Oh, when we grow up, when we grow up, we'll both be soldiers. And our horses will not be toys. And I wonder if you'll remember when we were two little boys. You were so happy when I sang that song for you. I had a nice singing voice. Mom, sister, and I have tears in our eyes. That was great. Do you remember the rest? No rest. She doesn't sound like Kate Smith to me. Attila, you really are unreachable. No, not exactly. She had me fooled for a few bars. Mom, sing the rest. Not in it now, dear. Your father is snoring. I need to go and roll them over. <coughs> okay, Mom. Bye-bye. Give my love to your plot mates. I'm sorry. Here's the phone telephone fairy. S son is signing off. Hold the phone. Don't go. He shrinks on the line. Take the call for Attila. Take the call. Let Attila at him. We will tell him to to we will tell him to shove Freud and all the others up his ass. One twenty per hour for filling our head with psycho babble. Bah, bah humbug. Ask him if it's on the couch or any other house. He says it's a freebie. Or on the house. He says it's a freebie. Okay, put him on. Hi, I'm calling to remind you you have a father. Isn't it time to talk with him? I suppose it is. I think it is my memory of this saying hello. I'll put your mother on that rings in my head. You told me you and your dad enjoyed great times on the phone after she died. Yes, we did. But the I'll put your mother on, I can't delete it. It's still in my voicemail. Do you want to speak with your dad? Yes, I do, but then do it. Remember a session with two years ago? You told me how much you and Albert enjoyed visiting him. One minute. Sorry. I apologize. <coughs> He was so happy. Oh, no. Wow. I truly apologize. Two years ago, you told me how much you and Albert enjoyed visiting him. You said it was like a gift lost in the mail for a very long time. Then it finally arrived, and inside was a lifetime of love that had never been opened. Okay. Mom, wake up, Dad. I want to talk with him. Hey, it's me, Attila. Are you crazy? Not now, not when she's around. She'll butt in. He'll be like a puppet on a string, the ventriloquist mother's dummy. Telephone fairy, please arrange to have my dad call me tomorrow night to wait till she goes to sleep. No, no, does Attila have to do everything? He always went to sleep before her. Tell the telephone fairy to call when she's cleaning her coffin, listening to the underground radio, and talking to herself. 
She won't hear a thing. Okay, Attila, I'll tell the fairy. Hello, shrink, I'm back. I made arrangements to speak with Dad in her absence. Bert, you gotta wind it up. It's a few 20, more sentences. 25 minutes already. I'm sorry, I didn't reel up. Well, Come on. should I finish the five lines? Five lines, and that's it. Yeah, that's all it is. Way over. You need time to join the telephone desk. I need to feast on a night of sleep. Hello, hello, son, are you still there? I turned your father over, no story. He's as quiet as a synagogue guard mouse. Gotta go, Mom. Give my best to your plot pals. Son, I never hear from anybody. Not my mother, not my sisters, not my brothers, no nieces, no nephews, not a word. I wonder what's keeping your father and I.